And hello, uh, welcome again to uh, our study in uh, the book of Jude. Jude uh, is, uh, this book is a book of apostasy uh, within the church, uh, the great falling away or the perversion of the church itself. Um, we're going to pick up at, uh, of course, there's only one chapter, chapter one, uh, where we left off at verse nine. And now um, Jude is giving some examples of, of uh, apostasy and heresy and, and uh, things that are, that are repulsive uh, and contrary to the word of God. Um, and it's things that we're familiar with, unfortunately. Before we start, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we ask for a blessing today, especially the revealing of truth in your word. Lord, help us to identify in, a, in our own churches uh, areas that could be improved upon and those areas which need to be uh, done away with. Bless us with the understanding. Bless us with the uh, sight that is spiritual. Help us with your Holy Spirit's presence. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. All right. Uh, Jude, verse 9. He says, But Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil, this is a great example, and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, the Lord rebu rebuke you. They also do this, in uh, it says, basically in matters of judgment and vengeance, by taking it into their own hands. Michael disputed with the devil over the body of Moses. Uh, the lesson is that Michael, the archangel of God, now you got to understand, he, he's a chief angel, did not pronounce a judgment against the devil, but put the judgment in to the Lord's hands. Now think about it. I have heard, uh, once was too much, but I have heard in the church and outside the church where people uh, would be uh, laying their hands on someone and uh, would say this. They'd say, uh, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, the Lord needs to do the rebuking, uh, but all too often they'll they'll interject, "I, I rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus." Well, calling on the name of Jesus is quite uh, appropriate. But you got to get the eye out of it. You can't rebuke any any demon, any devil. Um, it is the Lord's work, and and the Lord rebukes them. Uh, I call upon heaven to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ to rebuke, uh, but uh, never ever uh, say I rebuke you. Uh, I hear that. There are whole churches that they do that. Whole denominations. Well, they don't rebuke anybody or anything. Only the Lord is to do uh, uh, such thing. And I'll mention this because uh, it, it is in our text. Uh, there was a dispute here, and he's referring to, between uh, uh, the devil and the archangel uh, Michael over the body of Moses. There's a lot of speculation concerning that. Uh, and uh, uh, let me share my two cents. I think 
uh, that the devil wanted uh, Moses' body uh, for the devil's people so that they, they would erect a great monument, uh, a, a great uh, memorial. And uh, before you know it, people would be uh, worshiping Moses. Oh, they'd have pilgrimages uh, from around the world, and uh, and 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 they they'd come to his his place of rest, uh, so to speak, and they'd bow down and oh, thank you, Moses. Well, thank God. That's what I'll, I'll leave it at that. Verse ten. But these men, it says revile the things which they do not understand and the things which they know by instinct uh, like re unreasoning uh, animals. By these things, they are destroyed, destroyed. The false teachers, on the other hand, speak evil of things which they don't even understand. Uh, a lot of things that, about Christian uh, uh, life and behavior and and the things that we do they don't understand it they don't understand it when we kneel down before God they don't understand it when we cry out to him they don't understand it when we pray to him uh, they just don't get it uh, they instead they they pretend that they uh, have some kind of hidden uh, understanding making others uh, causing them to feel dependent upon upon some gift or insight that they have. Uh, the things that they do uh, know are not the wisdom of God, but the foolishness of a darkened heart given over by God uh, uh, to evil. You know, I'm going to stop right there. Just, well, let me finish. Uh, their knowledge is based like an animal who operates by instinct. Now, let me stop here. I remember a, a, a lady in church that was encouraging uh, uh, members of the church to gather with her so that she could open up to them mysteries. That she could reveal to th them things they didn't know and realize. Let me tell y'all something. The Holy Ghost does the opening. He does the revealing. And, and he is the, the one that gives enlightenment. Uh, when somebody tells you that they've got some sort of uh, uh, insight into mystery, um, you better beware. You know, I preach uh, and teach uh, Revelation numerous times. And uh, I, I want to tell you something. I, I don't know it as well as I'd like to. And, and if anything's revealed out of it, it it's, it's from the word of God. I, I give what little I, I have, but it, it, the mystery is revealed by God. You know, there was mystery Babylon in, in Revelation. Well, uh, the mystery of, uh, uh, of Babylon is revealed in God's word. Uh, we, we read that in Revelation. Uh, and we'll look at some other things concerning that later on. Uh, the instinct, their instincts, lead them to take advantage of others by getting uh, them power, prestige, wealth, uh, sexual advantage sometimes, or some other kind of fleshly advantage. It is these things which will lead to their ultimate destruction when God sentences them to punishment in hell. Now, verse 11, whenever you see this three-letter word, you need, to, you need to perk up. He says, whoa. He's not talking to horses, amen? He says, whoa. 
for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the era, error, not error, error of Balaam and perished in the rebellion of Korah. I mean, we've got three, three examples here. Uh, these men will be judged and it will not be pleasant for them. They will be completely uh, undone. Their gain will be lost and turned as judgment on their very own head. Uh, they went the way of Cain, it says, by doing things their own way, uh, despising the authority and instruction of God and taking matters into their own hands. Cain, what did he do? He killed Abel to satisfy his lust for vengeance. And the false teachers take advantage of others to satisfy their own appetites. Uh, they have gone head, head over heels uh, for error, specifically the error of Balaam, it says. Oh, there's a good story in the Bible that that you need to study. Balaam's error was that he wanted to use the power and influence of the divine for his own gain. You know, you know when 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 you have power, and and I know what this is about uh, from God. If it's to your own gain. You better be careful. Uh, now, Balaam was wicked to the core, uh, trying to harm the people of God for what? Financial gain. Some people will preach today. Some churches uh, encourage them to do so, uh, to preach uh, things strictly for financial gain. The seed faith that I've heard so much about, and I've seen it, uh, that that's wrong. You know, if you give, you don't give expecting a, a return, but you will receive a return uh, in one form or fashion, but uh, it's all by the grace of God. You don't give it to get. You don't give to get, you know. It's kind of like you, you, you negate. Uh, your efforts when you do it that way. Uh, the false teachers do the same. Uh, just as Korah is mentioned here, just as Korah uh, rebelled and was judged by God in the sight of Israel for spurning the authority of God, so too the false teachers will be judged for believing the authority of God to be something to be mocked and taken lightly. It isn't the authority of the church. It isn't the authority of the teachers and preachers. It isn't the authority of the deacons that, that must prevail and oversee. It is the authority of God. What saith the word? You know? Know your Bible, know what God says, know the lessons that he teaches, and then you're able to apply them uh, where you are, and in particular in the church, I think. Uh, normally I say any questions, <laughs> I'm going to have a little sip here of my coffee, getting cold. All right, verse 12. These are the men who are hidden reefs. You know what a reef is, R-E-E-F. In your love feasts, when they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves, clouds without water, carried along by winds, uh, autumn trees without fruit, uh, deadly uh, or doubly dead, and uprooted. <clears throat> Excuse me. These men are hidden reefs, it says, in the love feast, feasting with believers without fear. Now, a reef 
uh, is uh, something uh, found in the ocean uh, that um, breeds life, but at the same time, uh, it is uh, very hazardous. Uh, uh, there are it's, they're on the nautical maps and 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 uh, ships or are, are, captains are uh, must avoid these reefs or they will find themselves sunk. Uh, uh, he, uh, these men are hidden reefs, it says in our scripture. You know, a reef it sometimes is hidden. And, uh, uh, and disguise, but ultimately the truth of its uh, uh, treacherousness uh, will will come out. I remember uh, I was on a ship going overseas, a troop carrier, and and uh, we we docked uh, right beside a reef, and. Um, I mean, we were right next to it. Anyway, uh, a fellow uh, was anxious to go ashore, and he couldn't wait to, uh, you know, go ashore and, and play on the beach and do whatever he was going to do. And here's what he did. He dove off the ship on the wrong side. And he hit a reef, and it killed him. Reefs are destructive. Uh, he says now in our text that, 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 that these are hidden reefs in your love feast. Feasting with believers without fear. The believers often share meals together and call them, call them uh, love feasts, by the way. It's, I, we call them potluck dinners, don't we? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I miss potluck dinners more than you know. Uh, they were uh, celebratory of the love of one another that they had in the mutual bond of, of knowing Christ, these love feasts. These men joined these feasts without having any qualm whatsoever about the fact that they are not saved themselves. It doesn't bother them about their own spiritual condition. They do it to get to know the believers and to lead them astray and take advantage of them. You hear me? Many a salesman or business owner has, has a, uh, aligned themselves with, with a church for the principal purpose of networking or getting a uh, uh, a potential client. Uh, it's the wrong reasons, folks. Uh, uh, hidden reefs cause shipwrecks. And this is what the false t uh, teachers were trying to, to make of the faith of the believers. They are trying to wreck it. Uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 18 through 20 says, I'm going to read it to you. This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight, keeping faith and good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Among these, uh, uh, and he names uh, Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan so that they will be taught not to blaspheme. Believers can and do make shipwreck of their own, shipwreck of their own faith. Their testimony is lost and their ability to bear fruit for the kingdom is compromised. Their souls can be saved, but uh, uh, though as through fire, it's saved. Those who have been deceived need to be handed over to Satan. In other words, cast out of fellowship uh, so that their faith can be restore, restored to them. That doesn't mean kick them out of the church, by the way. 
false teaching uh, must be contended with and fought against. As Paul tells Timothy, the way uh, uh, to keep from being shipwrecked is to hold to the faith. Uh, maintain the sound confession and commitment to the authority of the entire scriptures. Scripture, uh, that is our foundation. Scripture, this is what we build upon. Scripture, uh, this is our guide and the director. Uh, to maintain a good conscience, not doing anything go that goes against the conviction of the spirit. You know, if you're doing something that, that you know, on the inside, you, I'm not comfortable with that, then get away from it. Don't do it. Uh, the, the false uh, teachers care only for themselves and not that they care, uh, uh, really have any interest in it. Uh, they they come along acting as though they want to disciple others, but they, their motives are actually uh, for destruction of others. Uh, they know no more, no, nor do they have any hidden knowledge and wisdom. They need to be pointed out and cast out. Uh, they often, too often, Christians are too nice in this area. Uh, false teachers are to be removed from the fellowship and exposed for who they are, thus eliminating their ability to work under the radar. You know, now this is an area that's very delicate. Uh, and I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying kick them out of church. Uh, but the, the, the fellowship of the church uh, would be denied to them, not the teachings of the church, not the encouragement of the church to do what is right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, well, you know, you'll never save a sinner by by blowing them off. You save a sinner not by becoming a sinner yourself, uh, but by telling them the truth over and over and hopefully uh, prayerfully uh, they'll be saved uh, you know I, I, I could go on and on with this uh, I, I don't want to beat this dog to death it says they are autumn trees without fruit doubly dead and uprooted a tree is and autumn is supposed to bring forth harvest uh, of fruit that will build up and encourage others. Uh, I, I remember as a young boy, and then later on in life, going to the cider mill. You know, when was that? In the autumn, because the apples were being produced. And oh, what a wonderful memory that is. Uh, I'd love to go again and get a... Give me a donut <laughs> and some cider. That's in the fall. Uh, these men are trees, but they are dead. You know, they have no fruit whatsoever. In fact, they are so dead that they are not even planted in the ground. The believer is to be a tree firmly planted by streams of water and bearing fruit in its season. Read Psalm 1. Read Psalm 1. Yet the false teachers are like the wicked. Uh, been blown about like chaff and tumbleweed. Uh, acting as trees, but being nothing but dead, worthless branches deserving to be burned. It reminds me of when I was uh, in Texas somewhere and we were way out in the it, the land seemed desolate to me, and there were these tumbleweeds. They've even made the songs about tumbleweeds. Well, let me tell you something. There's nothing pretty about a tumbleweed. Well, that's what this reminds me of. They're like tumbleweeds. They have no root, and they have no uh, use, really. All right, verse 13. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Let me get another little sip here, if you don't mind. You know, there's so much in Jude. I'm going through it fast. Uh, but uh, I'd love to preach through Jude at some church sometime. Verse 13. While waves of the sea casting up their own shame like foam, wandering stars for whom the black darkness has been reserved alone forever. Jude uses uh, some more imagery here, doesn't he, of the false teachers calling them wild waves of the sea that cast up their own shame, just like foam. Uh, their lives have no anchor and their lusts lead them to do unprincipled things because of their lack of self-control. You know, that's a real mark of a, a mature Christian. They have self-control. Uh, but these in the church, they lack self-control. They're out of control. Bleh. You identify somebody like that, beware. Their lives have no anchor and their lusts lead them to do unprincipled things because of their lack of self-control. That's worth repeating, wasn't it? Like wild waves, they want to cause shipwreck. They splash about seeking whom they can destroy. You know, I've had waves. I uh, went swimming uh, some a few years back, and uh, the the wave came over me. You know, I, I had my back to it, and it, it knocked me down. I couldn't get up. The waves kept coming over me, and I remember it well. I, I thought to myself, well, I'm going to die. And I guess I, 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 here I go. I'm, I'm going to die this way. And Brian Johnson reached down and pulled me up. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. And uh, saved my life. Uh, and I, I, I was appreciative of that. Uh, these uh, wild waves go about seeking whom they can destroy. Just that wave was trying to kill me. Uh, their deeds expose their own shame. And indeed, they glory in the amount of foam that represents destruction and confusion. You know, they, oh boy, oh boy, I got, I'm going now. Uh, uh, they 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 glory in it. Uh, they ca they can cast it up. Uh, the glory of the false teacher is in what should be his shame as he leads others astray and indulges his flesh. Uh, you you need to read Philippians three nineteen. That's what that's exactly what they say. Uh, uh, the church has dealt with this uh, from its seemingly at the beginning, and now it runs rampant. Uh, uh, they, they don't have any shame in leading people astray. You go in there on fire, you've been saved by grace through faith, and you've made a profession of faith and follow the Lord in baptism, unite yourself with the church, and they come along and they say, oh, yeah, you need to do this. Uh huh? What saith the word of God? All right, we're going to stop there. We'll pick up at verse 14. I know I've been going slow, but there, there's some jewels in this. Uh, I hope you stay with me. We'll come back and go to Jude uh, chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 14 uh, next week. Until then, let's have prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us not to be uh, stumbling blocks. Help us not to cause difficulty and trouble concerning the truth. Help us to rely upon you and your word and uh, have no fellowship with that which is false and would lead astray. Bless us, Lord. 
Help us to learn more about you and then share it with others. In Jesus Christ's name, you go in peace. Amen and amen.